the human brain has got a specially developed part called the prefrontal lobe of the neocortex. The prefrontal cortex enables us to do the more difficult thing. In other words, it gives us the ability that this is pleasurable, but I'll not do it. This is boring and yet I will do it. So the trick then is to utilize the power of the prefrontal cortex in reconfiguring our mind. How do you do that? See, this prefrontal cortex is very much like a muscle. This was an interesting discovery that researchers came to. Just like your muscles get fatigued with usage, your willpower also gets fatigued. If you wish to do push-ups, the first one is easy and then slowly after five it's getting a little difficult and after ten you're struggling and then you say, ah, oh, the muscle is exhausted. With this prefrontal cortex, our willpower, also when we exert it, it becomes fatigued. Now, common sense says it should not become fatigued, but it does. Very much like the muscles. There was a researcher called Roger Boymester in Germany. He set up this willpower test. Now, researchers have their techniques of testing willpower. They will give you a puzzle to solve, which is actually unsolvable. But you don't know it is not. So you keep on trying and then they measure after how many minutes did you give up. A check of your willpower. Or they'll give you the hand grip to press or how long can you press it, etc. So this German researcher, he set up his experiment like this. Students were divided into two groups. Students from the first group would be taken to room A where there were hot, aromatic cookies, but there were also bland radishes. And the students were instructed, you are not to eat the cookies. They would be left there for 20 minutes. Now, the researchers would watch from the window. Many of the students would pick it up, seeing themselves in the private room. They would pick it up. None of them actually ate it, but the willpower got exhausted. And then they were taken for the willpower test to solve the puzzle. On the average, they gave up after seven minutes. Students from the second group were taken to room B where there was no willpower test. They would walk there, eat as many cookies as you like. And then they were subjected to the test. On the average, they lasted 20 minutes, while the other group's average was 7 minutes. So researchers realized they had exhausted their willpower in this activity and that is the reason why they had less remaining for the test. Now that has an important uh, relevance to our lives. When we wake up in the morning, our willpowers are fully intact. But then as you go through the day, negotiating the terrible Bay Area traffic, the mind complains, you force the mind, a little bit of the willpower gets worn out. And then if you have a grumpy boss and he keeps shouting at you and you wish to shout back but control yourself, again the willpower is, is fatigued there. And by the time people finish their work, their willpower is very little. And that explains why couples, husband and wife, when they both go to work, in the evening very often they fight. Because they have got no willpower remaining to tolerate the bad behavior of the other. <laughs> On the other hand, if one is a housewife, then she has her willpower intact. No matter how he behaves, I will tolerate it. So social researchers realize that this is also like a physical muscle. But 
that has an interesting corollary. Like the muscles can be developed, your self-control can also be developed. You see, that's how the brain works. If you do mathematical activities for two hours every day, the portion of your brain that is required for math is getting engaged on a daily basis. So it starts packing more and more gray matter there, making it easier for you to do your mathematical work. If somebody is doing juggling on a regular basis, that portion of the sensory motor region required for juggling is getting engaged and it gets packed with gray matter. That's the nature of the brain. So the willpower can also be enhanced by practicing it. And this is an important conclusion. The more you practice self-control, the better you will get at it. It's so simple. So every time you ward off a distraction, it becomes easier and easier and easier. In other words, you have the urge to scratch, but you say, okay, my willpower challenge will be that the urge is there, but I will not scratch. Your prefrontal cortex is becoming stronger. And that willpower enhanced in one area can be used in every area of your life. However, to conclude, I will give you one of the best ways to enhance your willpower. And what is that? Meditation. Meditation is one of the most powerful techniques to enhance your self-discipline and self-control. Remember I said the prefrontal cortex has three portions to it. I want my goal, awareness of it. I won't, I will not do this. I will, I will do this. In your endeavor for meditation, all three of these faculties get exerted. Because in meditation you are aware, this is what I need to focus upon. And then there is the distraction. The mind says, can I think of my child or can I think of my dog? That will give me more pleasure. But then with your intellect, you control the mind. No, come back here. You are exerting these three faculties in meditation. The consequence, you are enhancing your ability for self-control. Even if your meditation is very low quality, even if the distractions are more, it really doesn't matter. Because your endeavor to meditate is an exercise in self-control. So researchers have discovered that a regular practice of meditation has the ability to change the configuration of your brain in merely 21 days. And when you develop those kinds of habits, in other words, what then is required is to utilize your willpower to create a beneficial habit. And once the habit kicks in, it becomes automatic. So the trick then, just like when NASA puts, you know, satellites in space, the maximum energy, fuel is consumed in the beginning of the flight. And after that, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Once the force of gravity is broken, similarly, we have the gravitational pull of previous habits. So exert yourself with the strength of purpose, with the understanding that this is an important ability to develop and force yourself initially until it becomes a habit. And once it does, you will find 
that your quality of life has improved with your ability to do deep work. So this is the reconfiguring of the mind, the network of the mind that I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you all very much. आ रहा है राधा कृष्ण टेम्पल एलन वेलकमिंग द अराइवल ऑफ बाल गोपाल A blissful staff with 24-hour kirtans and the keynote speech by Swami Mukundanand, followed by the auspicious Vishnu Sahasranam chanting. Participate in the dancing, singing, cultural program, fancy dress competition, and an effusive midnight celebration spread across five days of grand festivities. Mark your calendars for Friday, August 27th through Tuesday, August 31st. Visit RadhaKrishnaTemple.net for details. and registration